Hello everyone and welcome to the scientific method. All our lives, through school, through television and through the people around us, we have been told that if you zoom into an object millions and billions of times, be it that English novel that ruins your summer, to that quenching lemonade that represents summer, and to the oxygen that makes sure you go through summer, all of these things have one thing in common, and it's that all of them are made up of these tiny little jiggling balls called atoms. Or are they? How do we know that everything is made up of these balls? I don't know about you, but up till yesterday, the best explanation I had was because my teacher told me. But that's not enough. I want to know how humans came up with this definite conclusion that atoms make up everything. Two years ago, on the 23rd of May, 2017, my mom has been shouting at me for 10 minutes to get into the car because I'm late to school, right? So I'm so frustrated and so angry that I shut the door of the car closed. But then amidst all of this silence, I see these white, small, dust particles in front of me. They're barely visible, right? They're so small and they're moving up, down, left, right, center, all around. They're constantly moving, randomly, never settling, never staying still. And then a month later, I have the same occurrence with those same white dust particles. It just so happens while I was studying in my room, right? There's a ray of light coming through the window. And in that ray are those same small white dust particles following the same motion as before. No different, right? Constantly moving, randomly, never settling, never staying still. Both of these occurrences have been observed before. In 1827, a Scottish scientist by the name of Robert Brown first observed this type of motion. His scenario was different than mine, of course. He was observing pollen grains under a microscope. For what reason? I don't know. But he did see exactly the same thing I saw with my white dust particles. He saw the pollen grains constantly moving randomly, never settling, never staying still. When he first observed this, he named the motion of the dust particles and the pollen grains identically as Brownian motion. However, he was never able to find out what was actually causing the motion. At first, he thought that since the pollen grains were living organisms, they were probably moving around. But then, we both know that it's not the case because the dust particles were experiencing the same thing and dust particles are clearly lifeless. So what was causing Brownian motion? I'm guessing the answer is at your tongue tips. Yep, it's atoms. And that's exactly right. If we take the example of the white dust particles in the air, they are atoms of gas surrounding our planet's atmosphere, just moving around, constantly randomly moving in all directions. But we can't see them with our eyes, they're too small to be seen. However, the white dust particles can be seen with our naked eye. So what happens is that the atoms of gas in our atmosphere are constantly colliding in all directions with the white dust particles because there is so many atoms of gas in our atmosphere. So then the dust particles end up moving around with so much energy, changing directions suddenly. And because of these collisions, they will never settle. They will never remain still. And listen to this, it's absolutely marvelous. The white dust particles are small enough to be affected by the collisions of the atoms, but are big enough to be seen by the naked eye. It's like the white dust particles existed this fine line and it's like nature wanted us to find out about these fundamental constructs that make up everything wow einstein was the one 
who brought together and explained mathematically this century-long mystery. Einstein proved the existence of atoms. Is there anything he couldn't do? He couldn't stay with one woman, that's what. Even though Einstein discovered and put forth so many laws of physics that we know today, from proving the existence of atoms all the way up to discovering general relativity, which in itself, he created a subfield of physics. It took the man 16 years to win a Nobel Prize. 16 years. It's official. Einstein is the Leonardo DiCaprio of physics. Einstein constantly questioned his professors and he also questioned past geniuses such as Newton and Galileo. He never took anything to be fact and for a time he was despised for doing that. People became angry at him for testing the fundamental laws that held physics and testing the geniuses involved in their discovery. But by doing so, it led him to unravel the beautifully detailed architecture that the universe has set forth for us. We need to question the simplest of things such as how do we know atoms exist? Because if we don't, we will be standing at the frontier of ignorance when we should be standing at the frontier of discovery.